Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending 11-11-2017, Veterans Day. If you get a chance, thank a veteran, either online or in real life, or actually any day of the year is good to thank a veteran. So, my first article is from Business Insider, and I posted this on Facebook also, so some of you, if you follow me on Facebook, you've already seen this. Disney tried to hide the Millennial Falcon with shipping containers, but it's on Google Maps, and they show a picture here, I'll put it up along with the links to down in the description box will be the links to uh, the two articles I talk about today. But yeah, they stacked a bunch of uh, shipping containers around it to kind of block it from view. I'll read a little bit of the first part of the article here. I mean, it's obvious. It's, it's still not a really detailed view. It's obvious it's the Millennial Falcon, but it's just basically a rough shape. And with Google View being what it is, you just, uh, if there's any kind of detail that's different on it or something, you're not going to really notice. But yeah, you can tell it's the Millennial Falcon. Disney has kept a tight lid on details about the all-new Star Wars movies, but its strategy has been breached by Google Maps. The service shows a street view of addresses all across the world via satellite images, which are typically one to three years old. But Kevin Beaumont found something interesting at Long Cross Studios, a film and TV production facility near London on Google Maps. The Millennium Falcon is on site, or at least near a golf course by, and is surrounded by shipping containers, seemingly in an attempt to hide it. Long Cross about 25 miles west of central London has been filming has been a filming site for many huge films including Thor, The Dark World, Skyfall, and Guardians of the Galaxy. So yeah, somebody just searching in Google, you know, you gotta realize if you wanna hide something, you gotta cover it from the top too. It says here the this Millennium Falcon was most likely hiding amid filming of The Last Jedi at Long Cross. The Force Awakens released in 2015 was filmed at Pinewood Studios in Buckinghamshire, UK. You can catch the Millennium Falcon that's surrounded by shipping containers when the last Jedi hits theaters December 15th. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you wish to, if you're going to try to check it out when it hits the theaters. I, I definitely am. I've watched all the Star Wars when they've come to theater. last two have been pretty decent. Still, uh, nothing I don't think has really beat the first three yet, but they're doing a pretty good job with them. And uh, the last one I'm going to do, I'm keeping it short because it is a holiday weekend. Um, to give people more time to spend with their families and whatever. This is from popularmechanics.com. This actually goes back to August, but I just thought it was interesting. And it's not strictly science. It's more sci-fi, but it's a top list of the 50 greatest sci-fi TV shows ever from popularmechanics.com. And I'm just going to actually concentrate on the top 10, or actually let me say the top 11, because especially here they put number 11 as Firefly. And to me, uh, that should be right up near the very top. I think really if... Uh, the only thing I could really justify myself is uh, maybe you could say Twilight Zone might have been a little bit better. You could make it maybe a, a tie for first place, but I would probably, just because of the longevity and Twilight Zone was such great writing for so many seasons, maybe put Twilight Zone at number one and uh, Firefly at number two. But anyway, Firefly is on this list, number 11, and you can talk about your list, top three, top ten, what you agree with, what you disagree with. Number 10 is The Outer Limits. Totally agree with that. That belongs on the Top 10 list, maybe I wouldn't make it number 10. This is a newer one, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Now, of all of these type of, uh, what do you call it, anime, <coughs> Evangelion is my favorite, so I could agree with that too, that uh, yeah, you could put, uh, to put a more modern one in the top 10, you could say Evangelion. So, uh, Twin Peaks, that's one I do not understand. Now, I have not watched it, so maybe that's part of why I don't understand it. And even they make a comment here. Maybe people that have watched Twin Peaks can explain this. If you don't think this is sci-fi, tell it to the pocket universe dwelling dwarf who speaks in a backward audio tape language. So maybe I need to at least watch a couple of episodes of Twin Peaks. Now this is a list of top 50, so there's obviously some in here. Even me being a, a science fiction uh, type person, there's a few in here that I have not um, watched myself. So maybe give Twin Peaks. I just I I assume basically when I first heard about it coming on that it was not really sci-fi, but it could be, I guess. The Prisoner. Um, no, I wouldn't put The Prisoner. It's, it was uh, kind of a nice one, too, and I, I watched it when it was uh, on back. This was back a long time ago, the 60s, 70s, something like that, The Prisoner. Uh, pretty decent. I mean, maybe top 20, but I wouldn't put it in the top 10. Number 6, Star Trek, the original series, of course. I might have it a little bit higher than number 6, but definitely in the top 10. Let's look at number 5, The Twilight Zone. As I said, I'd have it number 1, but, you know, top 10, it's just, you know, it's open to debate, definitely. I think on most people's list it belongs in the top ten. Number four, Battlestar Galactica, the modern version, 2004 to 2009. 
I could kind of agree to that too. For a limited run series, I really wish they would come back and make another one too. Now, I know technically they tried with Caprica, which was more of a prequel, and it didn't really last that long. Although I thought Caprica was quite good too. And uh, I don't think Caprica is even in here in the top 50. So the other one that's not too is called Star Lost too. I don't know if uh, many of you remember that too, but the guy that played one of the parts in 2001 Space Odyssey, Kier Dalia, if I'm pronouncing that right, he was in Star Lost. And uh, that used to be, uh, I think it was second run by the time I watched on uh, the PBS station here in Chicago. But I thought Star Lost was a pretty good too. It was about these little domes with different cultures that were preserved. And the people in the domes had been in the domes so long, I guess, they didn't even realize they were outer space, uh, in outer space in a big giant spaceship in these domes. So anyway, number four, Battlestar Galactica. Number three, Star Trek The Next Generation. Eh, no, I mean, I, I could see either way, but I probably on my top ten list, I'd probably have it in the top 20. And number two, The X-Files. No, I wouldn't even have that in the top 20. I mean, I watched one episode of it. Uh, maybe it was just me, but I could not really get into The X-Files, watch... Uh, one complete show of it, and just, I'm not saying it was bad, I mean, it was it was an also-ran, you know, it would be somewhere on a top 50 list, if I made a top 50 list, but, nah, I, I might not even have it in the top 20, so that's just me personally. And number one, this I would say in the top 10, Doctor Who, although I would not have it number one, uh, unless you just want to give it credit for longevity, I guess, at this time, it's probably the longest running, and if you go back to, to radio, probably going to hold that title for maybe a hundred years, the longest running uh, sci-fi show uh, of all time, Doctor Who. And I did like certain series of it. What I did with Doctor Who is I'm not a strict Doctor Who fan like I am a Star Trek fan where I just watch everything. It depends on who's playing the Doctor. Uh, I really like David Tennant and a few others too. So if a particular person was playing the Doctor, then I really liked it. Um, some other ones playing the Doctor, I would watch an episode or so and then just say, nah, I just you know drop it for a while. So. Anyway, that's about it for this week. Uh, make comments down below of anything that I've talked about, your favorite science fiction show, your favorite top three, top ten, whatever you want to make it be. You know, I uh, welcome you to uh, make some comments. So That's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.